express your creativity to the glory of God. Enjoy watching. Hello everyone. This is my 15th video in my prayer journaling series and I started out with the book of Ruth and I'm in um, chapter 3, the book of Ruth. And um, before I go into um, the scripture for tonight and what I'm the creative part of the journaling, I just wanted to mention that I looked um, back at my introduction video and I think it was good because some things that I mentioned um, that I wanted to do, um, I kind of like forgot it. And um, even though I made notes in my little book, it was some things I just had said, you know, spontaneously. So looking back at the video helped to refresh my memory. And um, I had saw that I had mentioned that I wanted to do um, like some simpling, some simple journaling without any um, art, um, any um, color, just writing, just in case somebody was following along and they just wanted to do some prayer journaling without any type of colors, stickers, paint, whatever. So not for this video, but for the next video, video number 16, I'm going to stay true to that. And then God willing, and I'm saying it because it's not fair for me to have mentioned that that's what I was going to do. And then, you know, some people are watching and then I don't do it. So I'm trying to, sometimes it gets, it gets to be so much. So I'm trying to pace myself, but I'm really going to do that video where there's no paint, no stamps, no stickers, just prayer journaling. And it's on um, line paper and very simple. Of course, I'll have a little chat and share whatever the Lord places on my heart about that scripture. But for today... I am going to use, um, I'm going to say the tools that I'm going to use before I go into um, the art piece. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to try a different technique. Um, I'm going to, um, how can I say? Who? How can I say it? Hold on one second. Okay. Yes, I had to get my thoughts together for a moment. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to read something now that I want to from these two prayer books. I'm going to try to make it really quick. But when I start to create, I'm going to then share like what I learned from the verses that I'm going to be journaling on in the book of Ruth, which those verses are... I did my highlight list, right? Highlights, let me go to it. Go to it. Which is going to be verses 10 and 11. And the focus is going to be waiting on God. And I did put virtuous woman here. But I don't think so much I'm going to focus on the term virtuous woman. Because that comes into play anyway when we think about waiting on God from a you know as a woman um a male be watch may, may be watching this and you'll be a noble man <laughs> you know praise God so waiting on God so and that's going to be Ruth verses 10 and 11 but before I go into that and what I'm going to be doing creatively when I do the prayer journaling I just want to share something from these two books, since it is prayer journaling, um, this one is my, it's called my personal daily prayer book. And this was the right prayers for every need. And I don't use these every day. I use them as I'm led because I have a lot of books and a lot of devotional books. And right now I'm in the book, Jesus Calling. That's the devotional book I've been using um, for the past couple of weeks. But when I sat down to do my journal page, it was on my heart to share this. And even though this is um, my creative arts channel and I just I glorify God through it, um, I try to be sensitive to what he says speaks to my heart because I don't know who's watching. 
And um, today I got so much confirmation about prayer journaling really helping people. And it really touched my heart because that's what I so desired. Like, yes, I like the art and, you know, the stickers and the stamps. But, and I'm kind of weepy right now because God knows that when my heart, when I read someone watches the video, I'm hoping that and praying that God will speak to their heart and it's a word for someone even because, you know, people, some people are visual, some people are auditory, some people learn better through color. There's various different kinds of learners. So, you know, I've learned don't underestimate what I'm doing um, when I do um, creative Bible journaling and prayer journaling because you never know who's watching and sidebar, someone shared something with me that um, they had saw a praise dance, a mime. And um, that's what God used to draw them to Jesus. The way the person was worshiping and the song and what God had them do physically with their body. God knew that that person was going to be there and... The Lord spoke to him. The Lord spoke to this young man through this mime and he gave his life to Jesus Christ. It wasn't the moves per se, but it was the anointing. It was God in the movement. It was God expressing himself through the mime, the person that was doing the dance and the mime and he drew them to Jesus. So it's powerful how God moves and it's just so reassuring to know that God uses the arts. So I say all that to say is when someone looks at my channel and they're seeing the prayer journaling and the Bible journaling, my prayer is that God will use it to touch someone's heart, speak a word. So on that note, when I sat down today, the Lord placed it on my heart to take out these two books and to look on waiting on the Lord. Now, it was so funny because this book, I had kind of ripped out some of the pages and not to um, journal on them, but to, because I needed to make copies of them for another type of journaling I was doing a while ago. And um, I actually have a video of that in this, um, on this channel. So I had to place them back in there. So there's no table of content here. But it just so happened that the one that I turned to was about faith and endurance, which is so connected to waiting on the Lord. And then this one, again, this, this one is a table of contents, but there was nothing there specifically about waiting on the Lord. But it was just one sentence in the beginning of this, the Lord had me to share. He wants me to share. And it says, talking to God. The more we learn about prayer, the more opt we are to turn to God for help, comfort, and guidance. That's it. Stop. I'm stopping right there. The more we learn about prayer, the more opt we are to turn to God for help, comfort, and guidance. And that truly blessed my heart because it's so true. You know, when we learn about Jesus and, you know, how he wants us to pray, and I believe nuggets that he revealed to us by his spirit in his word about prayer and he by his spirit by his power moves in our hearts and changes in our heart it does help us to pray more i do um believe that it, to turn to god because we we know our, when it's all said and done he's the one that can really truly truly help us that's long lasting and this devotional I'm going to read, which is December 19th. And today is December 19th. How awesome is that? It says, the testing of your faith produces endurance. And that scripture is James 1, 3. And Lord knows my test, my faith is being tested. And talking about waiting on the Lord. <laughs> and I cannot say that I've been waiting as nicely as I would like to state, I've been having some ups and downs, some nasty attitudes and praying about my nasty attitude with some things. And I've been like struggling, but still all the while moving forward, um, growing forward, falling, getting back up and growing and 
you know, um, it's been, it's been a test, but God is good. And it's, 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 it's needful, right? So it says, Lord, there are times when I find praying difficult and your answers elusive. That's where the weight comes in. I struggle to find and connect with you. Instead, I hear only my own words echoing back. And so my confusion increases. Help me, oh God, to change my prayers. Instead of asking why, help me to ask what. What do I need to do now? What can I learn from this? Then empower me with your spirit to respond to your answers as you want me to. Um, hold on one second. I just got an emergency phone call. Hold on. I just sort of, and someone, then they text me. Hold on, hold on. Okay. So I'm back. <laughs> so, um, I would say one thing is I don't have a problem with asking God why. I know some people say, you know, don't ask God why. Um, I don't agree with that. Um, who, what, when, where, why are questions are basic, um, <laughs> inquiry questions. And I don't, I don't have a problem with asking God why. Why is this happening? Um, so that part I have to say, like, um, I do have some difference of opinion with. He's my father. He's my dad. And if I want to say, ask him why, um, I don't believe he faults us for asking why. Um, but I do believe we need to ask what, what do we need to do now and what we can learn from this. And um, how to go about things, um, I believe we can ask God when, um, where, and ultimately he's going to make the choice whether he's going to respond to that and how he's going to respond to it. But I do believe that we could ask him. But yeah, but I do believe this pertains to waiting. The testing of your faith produces endurance and we know it works patience and everything. Um um, per perseverance, it builds character. And um, that is so connected to waiting on the Lord. So I want to share those two um, tidbits, this prayer and that um, word of um, encouragement from the right prayers for every need. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into um, the creative journaling part. And I'm going to do a talk over. I'm going to do a talk over um, for the rest of the video to discuss what I learned from Ruth um, chapter 3 verses 10 and 11. And um, the video will be showing, the creative part will be showing as I am um, sharing um, what the Lord spoke to my heart with that. But let me go into what I'm going to be using. I'm not using too much tonight. Um, uh, I created this journal page back in January, 2015. That's when I first really started, um, doing prayer journaling in my art journaling Bible. And, um, I really didn't know how I still like, I, like I'm not much of a concrete artist. I say that a lot, but, um, I'm going to stop saying that because, um, maybe God wants to develop my skill set, and I don't want to be like, how can I say like, um, Hindering myself, I keep saying that <laughs> I'm not much of a concrete artist. Um, I'm I'm learning. So I drew this. I actually looked at a uh, picture of an eagle, and um, copied what I saw, and I drew this. And so I made a copy of it because I'm going to use it in my prayer journaling tonight. Now, if you don't have an old picture that you drew. That you can make a copy of. You can use a picture from a magazine, from a book, or something that represents what you want to um, journal on. So I'm going to be using that. I'm going to be using a sticker that says patient. I don't think I'm going to use this. I was going to use this and this at first. It's really nice, those two together. But I really want to use this eagle. And it's this um, sticker here it says they will soar on Bible wings like eagles. And it's actually Isaiah 40, 30. And, um, you know, it says Bible, this is from Bible journaling, Bible journaling and stickers from American Crafts. And I'm going to be using some colored pencils. 
in these pens, right? And I am going to just do my prayer journaling right in here. This was this page for roof eight, five, and six. So I'm going to journal on verses 10 and 11 right here. So I'm going to get started. And like I said, I'm doing a talk over. So, um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So let me get started. All right. God bless you. And remember, Jesus loves you. Bye-bye. Okay, so I'm going to read the verses um, from Ruth chapter 3. It says, The Lord bless you, my daughter. He replied, This kindness is greater than that which you've showed earlier. You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And now, my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all that you ask. All my fellow townsmen know that you are a woman of noble character. And when I read that, it just reminded me of wisdom. Not only wisdom, but waiting on the Lord. Especially because Boaz said to her, You have not run after the younger men, whether rich or poor. And we know that Ruth had a need. And she also was looking out for her mother-in-law, Naomi. But instead of her going about and doing things the way that, um, I shouldn't say the way that she wanted to, but instead of her going about doing things any, any old kind of way, she heeded Boaz's instruction and also Naomi's. And because of this, he says, and now my daughter, don't be afraid. I will do for you all you ask. All my fellow townsmen know that you are a woman of noble character. And it reminded me of, for my life, you know, how sometimes there is a need, a pressing need <laughs> um, for something tangible or just answers or just change, whatever it is. But I know the wise thing to do and the noble thing to do is not to run ahead of God and to wait on him. And I'm not even saying that that's easy, but it remains the fact that that's what's the wisest thing to do. And so what I decided to journal on was um, write a prayer journal, um, journal a prayer rather, on waiting on the Lord. And hold on. Yeah, I, I realized that I wanted to read some notes from um, the previous page that I did um, for the highlights. And I wrote here, it says, um, We see Boaz honoring Ruth's request, for she did due diligence in obeying not only Naomi's voice, but Boaz's, and did not seek after young men. She did not seek to to do things in a haphazard way or a rush way or even in a way that is foolish slash foley to get her needs met. She is praised and God and Boaz honors the request. God honors the request of his obedient children. A woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Right? And that's a blessing. And, um, yeah, you know, when we wait on God, he answers our prayers. He answers it in his timing and in his way. And, you know, that makes us um, people of noble character when we wait on the Lord. And it will be rewarded. God, we will receive praise. And I'm not saying praise from man like, you know, um, like somebody's like, how can I say, like heralding us. But it's noticeable people people even if a person doesn't know that it's the lord they know something is different by the way we go about handling situations and dealing with things so i'm going to read this prayer that i wrote it i wrote dear father god it is not always easy waiting on you i do not wish to run ahead of you and go about handling and acquiring things on my own I ask that you continue to help me grow as a woman of noble character. 
develop, developing me as a virtuous woman. I ask for your strength to wait and endure through each process of your making. I know you will answer in your good timing and as you see fit. Thanks, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, so that's what those verses um, made me think of. And, um, you know, made, it made me think of that and just reflect on waiting on the Lord. So what I'm doing now is, as you can see, I'm coloring the background with some colored pencils. I was going to use distress ink or uh, um and then I'd say maybe some gelatos but I didn't know if my pen this pen that I have that I'm going to use is going to was going to write over it and then I I just really wanted to do something like maybe um do something that I think maybe people will really have like a colored pencil you know um at some point, yeah, I'm going to pull out my distress inks, but those were the two thoughts that was running through my mind tonight, whether the pen was going to write over the distress inks and, um, or the, um, gelatos and, uh, and maybe someone's watching this. They may not have the distress ink. Most likely people will have colored pencils. So I want to do like a generic type of technique, a general technique. Um, so I'm going to play some music in between each stage. Um, I think because I've already stated the um, the reflection part for the prayer journaling, I can like edit some of this. Okay. Yeah, so right now I'm curling the paper because after coloring it, it was like flipped up a little bit. So I decided to um, curve it back down. Previously, I was cutting out the eagle. So now I'm going to position it to see um, where I really want it. And I'm putting this um, sticker here that says patient. I actually got the sticker from Dollar Tree. And I'm putting the bird. So the eagle rather. Now um I I'm reaching for, I believe. No, now I'm gonna glue it down. I ran out of um this repositional glue. So I have to use this Tim Bow glue. I've had this glue for a very long time. I don't use it that much. But um I was glad that when I opened the top that it just I squeezed and it came right out. I thought it was gonna be a bit tried out. Or just like the nozzle clogged up and then I would have to stick a pin. But that wasn't the case. So and like I said, I've had that for a very long time. So now I'm putting down the eagle. And um, some of the glue eased out on the bottom. I was like, oh, you can't really see it there that much. But um, I was trying to take it off. So then I got the X-Acto knife and I just started scraping it off. As you'll see in a moment. So... So I went to go put the other sticker and it just, I don't know. I just was like, I don't think that's going to go. So sometimes it's this, it's a saying that less is more. And I just felt like in this case, less would make it more better, <laughs> would make it better. Right. I didn't, I didn't, that sticker would have taken, it would have, I think it would have um taken away from the page. I think it would have took away from the page because um it, it's not only it's not transparent it is on an opaque white piece of paper and it would have showed up in an awkward kind of way out I, I wasn't comfortable with it so i said let me just leave it off and um that was that so now i'm rereading the scripture so when i um do my prayer journaling i'm on target 
So that's what I'm doing now. And I read the prayer earlier. So um, I'm not going to read it again. Or should I read it again? Yeah, I'll read it again while I'm writing it. That's okay. Dear Father God, it is not always easy waiting on you. I do not wish to run ahead of you and go about handling and acquiring things on my own. I ask that you continue to help me grow as a woman of noble character, developing me as a virtuous woman. I ask for your strength to wait and endure through each process of your making. I know you will answer in your good timing and as you see fit. Thanks, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. And, you know, I will add that it really takes the strength of God to wait on him. Because, you know, if you're a very ambitious person or even very smart and have, um, a, um, if you're very savvy, have a lot of ideas and, and, um, if you're very creative or, you know, anything along those lines, sometimes it's easy to come up with how to get something, how to fix something, what to do. But I've learned walking with the Lord that it's not worth it. It's best to wait on the Lord. It's wiser because honestly, he knows what's best. We know that's the pure fact of it. And sometimes we put more burden on ourselves than we really um, need to. Actually, we don't need to put any burden on ourselves. Sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves to get things done a certain way in a certain time. And in God, you know, he's a God of peace. He wants to, um, you know, do things for us and help us to do things, but he wants to navigate us in a way that's going to glorify him and benefit our lives and the lives of others around us or whoever is going to impact. So, you know, that's just something that I've learned along the way with the Lord. And I always need him to remind me because, you know, we're human and, you know, we've learned something, but we're not perfect. And there's days where, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm waiting on the Lord. It's easy waiting on the Lord. You know, we're strengthened. And in those days where I may feel kind of weak <laughs> and it's like, Lord, help me. Because if you don't help me, it's not going to get done. And it says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. And that's why. I use the eagle because those that wait upon the Lord shall, well, I mean, let me read it. It says, those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagle. And, you know, that means soaring. We soar in the Lord when we wait for him. So that's my prayer to keep soaring in the Lord <laughs> and for his strength to just wait, wait on him. So. I outlined I um outlined the eagle here and then I'm going to um use some um glitter pen. So let me see um the um not glitter pen, the metallic gold pen. Hold on. Yeah, so there's a metallic gold pen. So I'm put, just putting some highlights, you know. On the eagle's feathers and the tail. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I decided to put like. A real slim, thin, sketchy border around the pages. And that's that for that. So now I'm going to put, based on Ruth 3, chapter 3, verses 10 and 11. That's what I'm writing underneath the tell. And, um, yeah, that's that for that part. So now I'm just going to show the page. It looks a bit glossy because of the color markers. As you can see the tint from the gold metallic pen. So thanks for watching. God bless you. Remember Jesus loves you. Bye bye.